work as hard as you can work and you just don't seem quite to, to get to the next level. How would you like to build a business, like a real estate business that does 100 plus deals a year and you're really on autopilot? It doesn't matter what your lead gen is or what your tactics are or what, how you do things. What matters are the principles that you do them with. It was the principles I was working on that literally led me to my demise. So I, I flipped it completely. I founded my business on the principles that actually work. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caru. Well, it's 12 or excuse me, 208. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the EXP Young Professionals Mastermind with Mr. Ricky Carruth. We host this mastermind typically every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. But we have a special day and time today with Ricky. So a few housekeeping items before we get started. Please make sure that your microphone is muted. If you have any questions for Ricky, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I know that he'll be answering some of those questions throughout this presentation. This mastermind is being recorded and will be posted in the EXP Young Professionals workplace and Facebook groups. So please make sure that you go join those if you are a part of EXP. If you don't already, please make sure that you follow us on Instagram at EXP Young Professionals. Stay up to date on everything that we're doing. Ricky, you wanna get us started, let's hit it. All right, good to see you guys. Um. Hey, first off, let me hear from you guys in the chat um, as far as like where you are in your business. Um, like who, what, like, let me know in the chat. That way I know which way to go with this. If you're kind of like, mm, let's just say not struggling, that's not really the word, more like plateaued, like plateaued in your business. Like, um, you know, the more you try, you just can't quite seem to break through, get to that next level, whatever the case may be. That's really what I'm going to be talking about uh, today. Um, all right. So, so let's dive in. All right. I'm going to share some slides. Uh, I'm going to do some work on my vibe board here for you guys, just to try to help you visualize everything the way it needs to be visualized. So you can really, um, understand what I'm saying. So, I mean, the first question is, have you ever wondered how top producers do so many deals seemingly effortlessly? Like, it just seems like they, <laughs> just do deals out of thin air and it doesn't take much effort on their part. It doesn't even seem like they're working uh, very hard. Okay. You know, you, you, you see those type of agents and you think to yourself, man, that sure would be nice. Okay. So there's the agents that feel like you work as hard as you can work and you just don't seem quite to, to get to the next level. And then there's these agents you see, it's just like, are they magicians? Like, how do they magically make these deals happen just out of thin air? Um, and so that's what I want to kind of get into today with you. Um, you know, how would you like to build a business, like a real estate business that does 100 plus deals a year and you're really on autopilot? Okay. That's where we're going with this because that's exactly what I did. It's exactly the type of business that I built and I've helped a lot of other agents do the same thing. So today I want to share with you guys, not so much the tactics, because honestly, anything works. Like there's not a single strategy, uh, you know, tactic, uh, script, um, you know, prospecting method, marketing method that does not work. You know, the weirdest prospecting and marketing stuff that you can think of that, that someone has told you about, or you've seen someone do, or, you know, even things that you've seen agents do that didn't work for them. There's people making a million bucks a year off of just that every single thing you can think of. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, I built my business just calling property owners. Yep. But I'm not, I don't, I don't preach cold calling. I'm not, I don't care what your lead gen is. Okay. So we'll, we'll kind of get into some of this because it doesn't matter what your lead gen is or what your tactics are or what, how you do things. What matters are the principles that you do them with because the principles don't change and the principles for real estate don't change for insurance, don't change for mortgage, don't change for, you know, car sales or any, anything. Uh, the principles work for anything and they work for any avenue you want to take for real estate. Okay. 
So that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. The principles behind how to actually build your business that you should found your business on. And it took me many, many, many years to, to learn this. I got in in 2002 and um, I was taught the traditional way, you know, high pressure, you know, get the deal done. Don't worry, but you know, just if, they, if they're not interested in doing a deal, don't talk to them anymore, that kind of thing. And I literally, because of that strategy, because of those principles, the wrong principles I learned, that's why I lost everything when the market crashed. I went back to roofing houses. I was sleeping in my car. I was bankrupt. I lost all my houses, all my money, everything. And um, I got a job on an oil rig in Mississippi for a cut for a year. And I uh, got laid off from there. And I got back in real estate in 2008. And through through that entire process, you know, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> why did I lose everything? I'm the most honest, hardworking, dependable, you know, agent out there that I know. Why did I lose everything that I have? And it made me so curious. So I went on this journey of reading. I read over a hundred books in the course of about two years. And uh, what I what I realized was astonishing. It was the principles I was working on that literally led me to my demise. So I, I flipped it completely. I found in my business on the principles that actually work in the business. And it doesn't matter who you are, these principles work. It doesn't matter if you're new or old or experienced, these principles work. It doesn't matter what market you're in or how many agents are in that market or how low inventory is. None of that matters. None of that matters. Um, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick, you know, snapshot of like the mindset of most agents all the time, but more so right now with the way the market is. An agent on a Zoom call earlier this week, he said, you know, I love your strategy, Ricky, of, you know, calling owners to ask them if they want to upgrade into a home. The problem is there's no inventory here. And he was in this really high end market in Colorado. And I was like, okay, what's your market? I Googled it right then. I clicked the Zillow link, homes for sale on that market. And guess what? 48 homes for sale. And this is like 3 million and up. Like this is a high end market. Um, 48 homes for sale. And I'm like, bro, see, see, here's the thing. Like he said out of his mouth, there's no inventory to work with, but where did he get that information? Cause it's not based on facts. He said it as if it's the gospel of his market. There's nothing for sale. There's no listings to work with, but yet there's 48 listings there for him to work with. It's the same thing with agents that they, they don't look at facts. I'm not talking about you guys. <laughs> I'm talking about other agents. They don't look at the facts. You know, they'll say, "Oh, the market's dead." I'm like, "Well, wait a minute. Have you went into your MLS and counted how many closings are happening every single day in your market?" You no, know, it's like they're like, "Oh, well, you know, just because it's down, you know, like national sales are down four percent from last year, and yeah, they're down quite a bit from the six million that we sold back in 2021." Uh, but guess what? It'll never go to zero and closings will happen every single day, <laughs> every single day. But uh, this is me right here. When I came back into real estate, this is probably 2011 or so. I made a hundred thousand cold calls from that desk right there at Remax of Orange Beach, Alabama. And um, that was a guy right there that was just going to do whatever he had to do to make a million dollars a year. That was the primary, like you got to figure out what that one thing is that you're chasing, right? And you got to figure out the two to three things that's going to get you there and throw everything else away. All right, there's a book I want you guys to read. It's right here. It's called 10X is Easier Than 2X. This is the best book I've ever read. Um, this will help you. Th this is a game changer, I promise. 10X is easier than 2X. And it talks about just that, okay? Every time you plateau in your business, um, and in life, what's happening is, is you, the actions you took to get where you are, aren't working anymore. They got you where they, where you are, but now you have to take a step back, be grateful and appreciative of where you are and how far you've come. That's step one, appreciate where you've come and how far you've come. And, and, and then you have to take a step back and say, okay, where's the 80% of my actions that's holding me back. And we got to eliminate that and make the 20% that's moving the needle your new 80%. Well, the problem is that most agents, people in general, they won't let go of that 80% because it got them where they are and they're scared to lose what they've got. But it's not going to happen. They're going all in on what's working even better. Okay. So leveling up is 
Identi being appreciative of where you are and how far you've come, identifying the 20%, making your 80%, getting rid of the 80% that's holding you back. You use that till you reach another plateau and you do the same process. Because what happens is, is we look at where we are and we compare ourselves to where we think we should be. And then we, we start to devalue where we are and how far we've come. And then we're just, we, we become frustrated and depressed and sad about our situation, even though we're crushing it even though we're crushing it um and that that's that's kind of that that's i fell into that trap everybody falls into that trap okay so appreciate where you are you're a real estate agent all right in the usa right what's the percentage of people out of the seven billion that are on earth that would wish to god that they could be in your shoes to be in an industry that's unlimited there's no competition and closings happen every day forever <laughs> i mean you could be doing so many other things, including flipping burgers. So there I am. And by 2014, I started selling 100 properties a year. So this is a screenshot from my MLS for eight. This is eight years worth of data. So you can see I was at the top every year, single agent, beating out teams and everybody. And you can see my units there were 812 deals. I did 100 deals a year for eight years in a row because when I came back from losing everything i realized the principles that i should have founded my business on that i'm going to share with you today and here's the funny thing because we called this close more deals without even trying guess how many hours i'm going to switch back over to where i can see you guys guess how many hours where's the chat in this thing let's see here we go okay put in the chat how many hours do you think i was working as a single agent closing 100 deals a year at that time i want to see what you guys think you guys, have, some of you guys already saw, already know a little bit about me. All right. So anyway, I was working a, a 20, 20 to 30 hours, 20 to 30 hours a week. Okay. So we call this close more deals without even trying for a reason, because that's what I want to teach you. I want to teach you how to do more with less. That's what this book's about. It's, it's about 10 Xing is easier than 2X. When, you, when you're 2X, you're trying to double your business. You just do a lot more, you just do more of what you're doing. But when you 10X, you have to take completely different actions and you work smarter, not harder. All right. It's, it, it's something to think about. So as I got back into the business, built it up. Now think about this. I got it in 2002, made it, made a meal, lost it all, came back in 2008. And it took me from eight to 14, six years to get to a hundred deals a year, six hard years of grinding my face off to get to 100 deals, all right? And then I did that for eight years in a row. And in 2017, the first year I made a million as an agent, I decided to become a coach. And so now I'm one of the most well-known coaches in the country, in the world, uh, for real estate agents specifically. And the whole mission when I started the coaching business was to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry one agent at a time. It was the mission from day one. It's still the mission. It's always going to be the mission. Okay. So I, I grabbed these screenshots. These are uh, recent. You can see the dates on these. Uh, this was Tuesday. This was also Tuesday. Um, this guy here in Navarre, this is, these are all coaching students. This guy in Navarre did the, uh, the biggest deal on Navarre Beach for, uh, for 5.335 million um, a couple weeks ago. Um, this agent picked up a $2 million listing in New York. He's downtown Manhattan. Uh, he did the listing presentation exactly like I taught, taught him to do it. Another agent picked up a million dollar home this week. Um, this guy here, he 8 x his business. Uh, he capped for the first time. He's headed towards, he's headed towards Icon. Um, this person took the listing challenge and said, things are going good. I was like, you know, rockets. He's like, thanks for having me. I got three active listings, uh, three, three, uh, three listings going on the market this week. This was May 20th. These are all recent. I've got thousands of these, um, you know, in my phone and stuff like that. So these are just a couple of agents that, that I've, that I've helped in like some, some of the testimonials from here recently. Another book I want you guys to read, I'm like halfway through this thing, The Agent's Edge by Jordan Cohen. If you haven't read this, oh my God, this is the best real estate book, like real estate specifically for listings and stuff that I've ever read. Um, Jordan, great, good guy uh, and a great book. So anyway, for what it's worth.
All right, let me let me dive in here to the principles. All right, what I'm gonna do there, I'm gonna share my vibe board. I'm gonna hop on this vibe. So the principles I wanna share with you guys today, the reason why top producers, um, they do things so effortlessly is because they've realized these three things, okay? These three principles, right? Time is the first one. The second one is intention. And the third one is retention. Okay. So let's let's get into the time part of this. There's two things with time. Okay. Um, and top producers figure this out. It, it took them time to figure this out. Okay. But there's two things. It takes time to develop. communication skills okay that's the first thing it takes time to do that because most people get into real estate and they're like oh i know how to talk to people i'm friendly i can make friends well it's a completely different ball game when you start talking to people about buying real estate and things get real weird real fast you guys know exactly what i'm talking about right so understanding the communication skills needed to actually create friendships in a business environment is something that doesn't happen overnight. And so what happens is agents come in the business and they start making calls and it doesn't work, right? They, they, they get people that hang up on them or you know people ghost them or whatever. And they think, oh, this doesn't work or this, this business is uh, uh, you know, not for me or whatever the case may be. But, but top producers realize that it takes time to develop this and guess what they do? They spend time developing it and realize, okay, if it takes me a couple months, a couple years to get this down, that's okay. Let me learn how to talk to people. If, if you're talking to enough people, guys, if you're talking to enough prospects, all right, and you're not getting the results, it's because we need to work on this, communication skills. It's not that you're not talking to people that are buying and selling real estate, okay? You're talking to people that are buying and selling real estate, right? Because closings are happening every single day. All right. Closings are happening every single day. The problem is you haven't heard, you haven't learned how to talk to them the right way. And it, and it, and it takes a long time to, to get that down. Okay. That's something we can talk about when I move over to intentions for now. I also want you to realize that it takes time, right? If you want to build an automatic business, something that's on autopilot, it takes time to build a database, right? If you don't have a database, then you're not gonna have repeats, referrals, and referrals over referrals coming in. This is how I work 20 hours a week on 100 deals a year. It's because it's all from my database at that point. I'm gonna lay out for you where you can visually see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So with communication skills, right, we're gonna talk about that when I move to the intention principles but for now i want to focus on database and i want to help you visualize this okay all right so let's say year one right this is year one all right year one okay the leads that you get are new leads right put it in the chat if you know what i'm talking about year one all you have is new leads. You don't have any warm leads like people you've been talking to for years, none of that stuff. It's all new leads. I mean, even if they're a little warm because they might want to do something, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about new leads. Even if they're warm and might want to do something, they're still new. You don't have any old leads. They're all new leads because you just got started in the business. Okay. Now, if you have the right, remember the third one here, retention. Okay. We'll talk about that when, when I get to retention. But if you have the right, retention plan in place then in year two the new leads turn into warm leads and if the retention plans in place year three they continue to be warm leads and year four they continue to be warm leads and year five they continue to be warm leads okay now this is where magic happens 
Year two, so year one, you got new leads through prospecting, lead gen, door knocking, Zillow leads, whatever you do, social media, whatever your lead gen is. Okay, year two, you continue to do that. So guess what? You have more new leads come in year two. So now your business is this big, right? Instead of just this big. And what happens to these new leads? Year three, they turn into warm leads. Year four, they're still warm leads. Year five, they're still warm leads because your retention is in place where when you meet someone, they never forget you no matter how long out it is. Year six, year seven, it doesn't matter. They never forget you. See, we gotta have a retention plan in place where people from year one never forget you. If we have that in place, we're golden because as this lays out, I'll, I'll, you, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So you're, and, and let me, let me, let me show you this. Okay. You see this, you see this shape right here. Okay. Most agents, they come in and they prospect year one, they prospect year two, but they stop prospecting year two. They do a great job of nurturing these people they met and those people remember them forever. But guess what? Look at the shape of their business. It, it went up and then it plateaued out. And what happens? These agents make 200,000 their entire career every single year and they don't know why they can't get to 300,000. Okay, that's one type of agent. They stop prospecting after a couple of years and say, oh, I'm good, I got all these clients. And so, you know, it's just gonna grow. And it's a mirage because they're doing deals they're making 200, but they don't know why they can't get to 300. Well, it's because you need a bigger business. So year three, if you continue prospecting, the same thing happens. This turns into warm leads. They, they continue to know you all through the years. Year four, you continue prospecting. Same thing. They know you, know you, know you. Okay. Now, let's say year four, that was the last year that you prospected. Let's say by year four, you're making 500K. Just an example. And that's all you ever want to make. It's all you ever want to make in your life as a real estate agent. Well, you can stop prospecting because year five, look, year five, we didn't prospect. But guess what? Our business is still the exact same size as it was the year before. And year six, it's the exact same size as it was the year before. Because we had our retention in place where these people never forgot us. And now we can actually visualize our, our, our business growing like this. And we know exactly where we're going to be, when we're going to be there. And all we have to do is get our business up to the income we want. And then we can stop prospecting and we're good forever. See, back in 2017, when I made a million dollars for the first time, that was the first year I didn't prospect. I, that, that was when I quit prospecting. And guess what? I made a million dollars every year after because I, because I had this in place. Okay. So, so, you know, it takes longer. Let's just say it takes longer to get to 500 and a million, but let's just visualize this. I like to break this up in levels. Let's just say this is level one. This is level one agent right here where you're trying to figure out your systems. Okay. And then this is your is level two. This is where you're optimizing. You're optimizing customer ascension. You're really just taking it all to the next level, increasing your price per transaction, all the things that take your business to the next level. You're still prospecting, but you're also working smarter, not harder because you have your systems in place. And now you're just going all in on your systems. See, level one, you're trying to figure your system out. You're trying all this stuff. You're doing all these things. Level two is you figured your things out. Now you're going all in on your things. And then level three is no prospecting. You've got the business that you want. And now you're starting to think about your exit plan. Because let's face it. When you get to where you're making a million bucks a year, 500,000 a year, and you have to do that every year, year in and year out, it turns into a rat race. So you're building this as a platform to leverage yourself into, hey, if you want to do real estate forever, great. 
But if you don't, then you you want you're, you're going to start to formulate your exit plan. So if you if you if you can visualize this one thing, five new friends a day with property owners in your market, you're golden. Because if you do, if you create, if whatever the lead gen that you have creates five new friends or property owners every single day, I don't care what it is, social media, door knocking, networking events, you don't have to cold call. The reason why I cold call is because I realized that the only thing that matters when it comes to lead gen are, are the frequency of conversations I'm having with people in my market, with the right people in my market. That's the only thing that matters when it comes to lead gen. So if what if you're what you're doing lead gen wise is not producing conversations at the high the high, at the at the frequency that you need with the right people in the market to build the type of business you want, which a good um, measurement of that is is it creating five new friends a day with property owners in the market? If not, you need to try something else because your business isn't going to grow as fast as you want it to grow. If you do five new friends a day with property owners in your market every day for 250 working days a year um you're going to grow by a, about a, it's about it's what 1200 1200 a year okay so 1200 friends right 100 a month 1200 friends of that own property year one 1200 1200 1200 1200 1200 and by year five you've got six thousand Six thousand property owners that you talk to, that you make great first impressions with, that are now being are in your retention uh, system where they never forget you. How big is your business if you had six thousand property owners of your choice that own the exact property that you want, getting a weekly email on the same day of the week forever, and loved you when they met you, and they're now getting this consistent email showing them how consistent, dependable, hardworking, and honest you are. Now, how big is your business? Put it in the chat. How big is your business? How many of you would like to have 6,000 property owners that you have great relationships with getting a weekly email on the same day of the week forever showing them how consistent, dependable, hardworking, and honest you are? How big is your business? How big is your business? All right. I don't see anything in the chat. Are you guys, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Type a yes if this resonates with you. Am I just missing this? Okay, there it is. I see some stuff now. I'm like, oh, okay, where's the chat at? <laughs> you guys are quiet, man. I'm over here screaming. All right. Cool. So, so it, so top producers realize, Hey, it takes time to develop this communication skills, right. And to build the database needed to have an autopilot business. And what they've done is they've mastered these things. They've done these things so much that they've mastered these things. Okay. So the second principle, right? The first principle is time takes time, takes time to build this. It's not going to happen overnight, but you can literally predict exactly where your business is going to be if you look at it like this. So let's talk about intention, which comes back to communication skills and retention, which is going to be the glue that holds all this together. intention the second principle now where am i going to go with that i'm gonna go, i'm gonna go a lot of places all right so the first thing with intention that i had to realize and this is where i got it so wrong in the beginning okay i i had to stop selling houses all right. First thing I had to do, stop selling houses. Then I had to start helping people. 
as soon as I got this down right here, it was O-V. It was over. There was no stopping my growth. My, 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 the growth of my business was, was, it was growing so fast, I couldn't even keep up with it. Okay? Because I took this completely out. I quit, I quit, I, I, I quit trying to sell houses. What does that do? Right? What does it do when you, when you stop trying to sell houses? Well, when you stop trying to sell houses, <laughs> you get released of this. What's that say? Commission breath. Commission breath. <laughs> right? Commission breath. And that breath, that breath stinks. That breath stinks. They can smell it a mile away. So when you try, stop trying to sell homes and you start trying to help people, then you ain't got commission breath anymore. The difference when I went to a listing appointment and what most of you do when you go to a listing appointment is I'm not trying to get that listing. I'm trying to connect with the person, see why they want to sell the house and if I can help them, right? And the second reason is to get better at listing appointments. At listing appointments, I want to know why they are selling and I want to get better. Get better at what? Better at communicating to make them feel comfortable enough with me to pick me as their agent. And the only way to do that is to go on as many listing appointments as you can. This is what the top producers figured out. That it takes time to develop your communication skills. Why does it take time to, to develop your communication skills? Because you got to go on so many appointments and make so many calls that it takes time to do that, to get to the point where you've mastered how to stop selling, how to start helping, how to not have commission breath, how to actually focus on why people want to do what it is they're trying to do and get better at doing it. So you have to flip this around. Oh, but I need money now. I'm telling you how to get money now. You stop trying to sell homes and you start trying to help people. The first question I ask in a listing appointment, I go on a listing appointment and they're showing me the home. And I'm like, ma'am or sir, I'm like, this place is amazing. Why in the world would you ever want to sell this thing? Like, why, why would you sell this house? This house is amazing. Why don't you just stay? Now, what does that do? It shows them, I don't care if this house sells. I would rather you stay in this amazing castle. But it also asks the question that opens up the conversation to why they are selling. Now, what does that do? And this is the part every single agent skips. You know, the five steps of, of listing the listing process, uh, collect sell, uh, targeted seller data, confront them with value, comfort them with curiosity and dependability. Uh, uh, um, um, the listing appointment, confirm the listing appointment and convert the listing. That third piece, confront them uh, comfort them, comfort them with uh, curiosity and dependability. That's the part every single agent skips. They, they, they find the seller, they confront them with value, whatever that may be. And then they say they want to sell and they go straight to confirm the listing appointment and, and try to convert the listing, but they skip the comforting. This is what you have to do. You have to get really good at this. comforting them with curiosity and dependability. And some people say, some, some people skip the, they, they take that, they'll reach out and they'll say, Ricky, I'm comforting them. I, I followed up uh, and I'm showing them I'm dependable. I'm like, but you forgot about the curious part. So this is what you do, guys. You want to go five to 10 questions deep. Five to 10 questions deep. And what happens is, is that, 
Like when you come home and talk to your spouse, you know, or someone, you know, you're like, Hey, how was your day? And they're like, Oh, it was a great day. Oh yeah. Anything good happened? Oh yeah. You know, Susie at work did it again. And you're like, Oh, okay. You know, tell me about that. And you're like, okay. And then you sit down and you turn Netflix on or whatever, and you do dinner, but you don't really go deeper and deeper and deeper. And we're doing the same thing with our clients. So this is what I want you guys to do when you're talking to your clients next time. Okay. When you're talking to them, I want you to, I want you to go deep with why, right? Ask them why they're doing what they're trying to do. Ask them why they're doing what they're trying to do. But when they, but when they give you an answer, I want you to mute the voice in your head that's saying, what am I going to say next? I hope they like me. I hope they do a deal. Um, you know, I hope they don't go, whatever that voice is in your head, that's, that's, it's blocking you being able to listen to your prospect. It's distracting you from your prospect. You're not even listening 100% to them enough to understand what they're saying. Because if you were listening 100% of what they're saying, what they're saying would draw so much curiosity and create three more questions about what they're trying to do. See, when you create questions out of what they just told you, that tells them that you are fully engaged that you're fully present, that you fully care about them. It's not a, it's not a, a can question, a, a, a pre, a predetermined question. It's a question that came out of what they just said. And, and then they, they, you get into this conversation and you listen intensely. This is how you win listing appointments and get better. It's by going all in. They're the only thing that matters in the entire world. Now I could spend all day on this. Like we're, we're just scratching the surface on this stuff. It's 146. We're just scratching the surface. Like I don't have time to go into the depths of all this stuff. Okay. Retention. I'm going to, I'm going to just touch on this and then answer a few questions. Golly. I mean, this is not even scratching the surface. All right. So without retention, then everything dies. So get this, the guys, the, the, the guys and girls, the agents that don't have a retention plan in place, this is what their business looks like. Year one, new leads. Year two, new leads. Year three, new leads. What happened there? Year four, new leads. Year five, new leads, right? And in, in, in year, uh, uh, like in year, you know, two, three, four, five, the people, the new leads they got in year one, they don't remember that agent in year two or year three or year four. The, the people they met in year two don't remember that agent in year three, year four, year five. And so their business looks like this. It doesn't even get off the ground. They don't have anything in place to make sure that these people that they created great first impressions with if in fact they did create a great first impression remember them because these people even though they don't buy anything oh my god they're going to do 10 to 20 deals with you over the course of the next decade referrals repeat business referrals of referrals who do repeat business and give you more referrals like each lead guys could potentially be worth 100 deals to you in your career Repeat referral and referral of referral, repeat and referral of referrals. It's crazy. It's crazy when you think about the ripple effect of one prospect year one, the business that actually was generated from that one prospect that didn't even want to do a deal. They didn't even want to do a deal with you, but you made a great first impression. You had your retention in place. And over the course of 15 years, they were responsible for 100 deals in your business. It's, it's insane. And, and literally agents that don't have the retention in place, they don't care about staying in touch with people. They're just trying to sell properties. They're not trying to build a real career. They're losing out on this hundred deals and they don't even know it. So this is what it looks like when you don't have the retention in place. Okay. So there's two things with retention. There's the great first impression. Okay. There's the great first impression. You have to make a great first impression. 
right? Then you have to have a system in place where they never forget you. They never forget you. Um, there's agents that will come in and they'll meet people. They'll have a great retention plan, retention plan in place. And the people will, you know, go use other agents or they'll, you know, um, they'll, they'll do this. And let's say, let's say they, they'll say they put 300 people in their database and they have a great, uh, retention plan in place. And, but they, they're not really getting any deals and they're noticing like 15 of these people went and did deals with other agents, etc. Well, the problem is, is it's not just the retention plan. It's, that's not the whole thing. You got to get to where your communication is down, where you're making a great first impression, where you really stood out. And people thought this is this person's different. It takes time to build that skill, but you got to get good at this. See, see, it's the combination of great first impression followed by the retention. It's not great first impression with no intention or great retention and no great first impression. You got to have both. That's what makes the whole thing work. So this comes back to um, communication skills that we talked about. Okay, something you just got to work on. But th the first part is realizing this is something I need to work on. Then we work on it. Once we know that it's what we need to work on, then we work on it. Every single conversation we have, we're using it to practice for the next conversation, for the next conversation, for the next conversation. Okay, and then our retention plan. Dude, I have never seen, I have yet to find anything better than having the foundation being a weekly email on the same day of the week forever, right? And then that's just the foundation. And then you sprinkle in everything else, social media, direct mail, text, you know, occasional phone calls, you know, networking events, um, you know, you know, pop buys, uh, wh whatever. Okay. This needs to be the foundation though, right here. This is what, this is the glue because social media is an algorithm. And if people aren't engaging, they won't show you, they won't show them your content anymore. When they're on social, use social to get their email. Make a great first impression on social, get their email. Call them, make a great first impression, get their email. Show them property that were a Zillow lead, make a great first impression, put their email in your weekly email database so they never forget you. You create that every week. It's customized. It's showing them who you are. It's not just this cold, here's properties. It's like, here's properties and here's what I think about it. All right. So the, so the way that you win on social and, and content in general, which includes weekly email, video, DM, tech, anything is through giving your opinions on stuff. Not just giving them facts, but giving them the facts and what you think about the facts, right? Also telling people how to do stuff. See, there's a lot of people on social that say, this is what you should do, but they don't say anything about how to do it. So when you bring real value but but behind your personality behind who you are you know you're you're unique there's nobody like you you don't have to be anybody else you don't have to be ricky you don't have to be ryan Serhan. you don't have to be anybody but you that's what people want and you'll find if you'll stop trying to be other people and you'll just be yourself people love you to death and you'll start crushing it all right um man i'm just scratching the surface and i'm really just getting warmed up we could do this for a lot longer um anyway i'm going to i tell you what um i'm gonna take a couple questions you guys have a couple questions and uh but next week i'm doing my challenge it's a set more listing appointments challenge it's four days okay vip gets to come in an hour early and ask questions all four days all right, then I'm going to teach on lead gen, lead uh, re uh, lead conversion, client retention, and client ascension on those four days. It's going to be, I already did one of these, and agents are getting listings and converting left and right off of it. So for you guys taking this class, 
I'm going to give you guys 50% off the VIP. It's 300 normally. It's 150 for you guys today. Set more listing appointments dot com and just use the code 50 off it's good for 20 it's good till the end of the end of the day right there use code 50 off all caps all right and you'll get a 30-day free trial with red x all their products and you know, if you don't get to your question today, come to the challenge, learn some more stuff. Let me help you put your business together. Let me coach you next week. Come in and tell me where you're getting stuck in your business. Here are the other questions from the other agents and the answers I give them. It's going to be a complete game changer. All right. Let's let's uh, let's see what um, what questions we got here. If any. And feel free to, I guess, unmute too. You just want to ask. Come on, y'all. Raise your hand, unmute. Ricky just gave us so much value. I know y'all have got to have some questions. We've got him for another three minutes. Okay, I have a question for you, Ricky. You said to ask a few questions to the sellers or potential sellers. What's one question that you always get a really thoughtful response to that can kind of lead the conversation in a positive way? Oh, say again, a what? A thoughtful uh, answer? A question you can ask sellers that you always get like a, a positive response to, something that can lead it in a, in a thoughtful direction rather than like a, do you want to sell your house kind of question. Oh. Like you mean the initial question of like how to approach sellers? No, once you're once you're there at the appointment and you're talking yeah. with them, you said you always ask a few questions and, and kind of figure out why, but what's a question or a way that you format that that you feel is is good? Oh, um, it depends on what they have going on. Like it, and it everybody wants a cookie cutter, here's exactly how you ask it every time, or here's exactly how you follow up, or here's exactly how you convert, or here's exactly the way that you do it every time. And I'm just here to tell you, that there's not really a cookie cutter way to do this stuff. There's the principles that we do it by that never change, but the actual tactics and how to's and the scripts and all that, they change per prospect and what that prospect situation is. And most of the time, I already know why they want to sell and stuff because when I'm on the phone with them, I'm asking, I'm getting all that information right then and there. Um, I'm understanding. So, so here, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. A lot of agents, they'll, um, they'll have a, they'll have a seller say, Oh, I'm going to sell in six months. Um, I'm going to sell in six months and the, and the agent, the agent's like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll talk to you then or whatever. Right. And then they call in six months and they ghost them. It's a pretty common situation. Right. And the problem is, is that we initiated a follow-up and we have no idea why. So the, 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 the client may have realized that agents just kind of go away when they say, I'm going to sell in six months. And they use that as a defense mechanism to just get the agent to go away without telling them, hey, I don't want to talk to you, right? Or they might actually want to sell in six months. Either way it goes, when they say, I want to sell in six months, I'm like, oh, great. What's going on in six months that's got you wanting to sell then? And they're like, You're telling me this, that, or the other. And I realize this is legit. I'm like, oh, I'm thinking in my head, oh, okay, cool. You know, then I got to dig deeper though, because now I need to know Okay, based on that, I might want to go deeper there, like your kids graduating, going to going to college. Oh, what college are they going to? Da, da, da. I want to go as deep as I can. And then I want to understand, all right, well, do you want to close in six months or do you want to start the process in six months? Because that is com two completely different follow-up, you know, process, you know, servicing. Completely different. Think about it. If they want to close in six months, we almost got to get started now or within the next 60 days. If they want to start the process in six months, totally different process. So unless I know the situation to the core, this is what you want to do, guys. You want to ask them so many questions that you understand what they want to do and why more than they do. You want to ask them questions that they never even thought about of their situation. 
and make it to where they are start like they're learning more about what they want why they want to do stuff talking to you about why they want to do it right but it's different for everybody there's not like a cookie cutter like question or anything it's just like i'm filling situations out to see what's going on with this person think about it like this kimberly if this was your mom or dad what would you what would you say how would you talk to them what would be the questions right um and i think if you do what i'm saying with blocking out the voices in your head to listen to what they're actually saying you'll have those questions will come naturally to you if that helps thank you mm -hmm. tony yeah thank you for everything ricky quick question i know we're running up on time here say hypothetically we got some people on this call who are just really motivated to get on the phones when we get off of here is there a list or a subset of people that you're finding just through your program who have the highest intention right now say like older people or you know people in distress where are you guys finding a lot of success um i like expireds honestly um they were on the market um they tell you a story so you know we want to find out why people are trying to do what they're trying to do expireds are so easy because when you call them you're like hey i see we're trying to sell this house whatever happened and now when you say it right with the right tone you you come across as a detective trying to get to the bottom of this mystery and now they they become your partner <laughs> now they're now they're your little sergeant uh trying to help you solve the mystery of what happened to this house um it's so interesting and they literally tell you a story behind it now now some of them are like oh you're the 15 agent of the call or whatever um i bust right through all that i mean that doesn't take me like I, I can easily bust through that and get to the get to the conversation uh with them because i have so much confidence why do i have confidence when i call tony because i'm not trying to sell the house i don't I have zero there there's there's nothing there that's motivating me to try to sell that house right when you start to think about your business like this you're trying to help people and so if you if, if, if that one thing if you can really get this down and understand like you're trying to dig into the situation to see what's going on and if you can help it has nothing to do with the house nobody wakes up nobody wakes up and says i want to sell a house for no reason today nobody their mom died they got it their kids went to school they had a baby they lost a job um you know they need a bigger house even if they want a bigger house they want a bigger house for a reason they got it had a baby their mother-in-law moved in like something's going on in their life and when i realized that and i dig deeper there than they've even did digged then it's over now now am i going to win every deal no no but when i operate like this deals flow to me like water so I'm just trying to get in front of as many people as I can to use my skills of digging out what they want to do and why, and then let letting 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 the chips fall. I'm not trying to high pressure anybody. I'm not trying to get somebody to sign line. I'm not trying to handle objections into doing a deal today. I don't care if they do a deal today. I want to hear what they want to do. See an objection and a rejection. That's just your prospect telling you what they want to do. Instead of trying to combat it, why don't you listen to it? And help them do exactly what they just said see what i'm saying and so at the end of the day it doesn't matter what kind of leads you're, you're calling now i'll say this all the leads are the same <laughs> zilla leads are the same as circle prospecting leads it's the same people um you know expireds are the same as for sale by owners it's the same people um what you have to get good at is it once you once you break through that barrier and realize okay then if everybody's the same and leads are just humans in my market let me just go talk to as many as i can well i can't talk to everybody let me talk to the exact properties i want to do business with i like expires i like circle prospecting um it doesn't matter because once i develop my skill of being able to dig from someone right make someone trust me to the level that they tell me everything they want to do and why it doesn't matter what leads i'm talking to you know they're all going to be equally motivated yeah um 
Let's see if I can see on here. Heather. Is it or he? I'm sorry, Heath. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, you say five new friends with property owners a day. What are your top three ways to get in get to those people? Dude, I mean, you can you can it, it doesn't matter. Like you can you can use social media, you can do direct mail, you can door knock, you can meet them at you can meet them at Walmart, you can um do anything you want to do, okay? But here's the thing. The success of lead gen is determined by the frequency of conversations that you have with the right people in your market. So if what you're doing isn't producing the right frequency of conversations with the right people in your market, then you either need to tweak what you're doing or change what you're doing. Okay. Now I said that to say this, the reason why I just picked up the phone and call people, because I understood that it doesn't matter what my lead gen is. I got to talk to them anyway. And what, what do most agents do, guys? I'm going to let you guys answer this, okay? What do most agents do when it comes to lead gen, right? They create content and what? What do most agents do? They create content and what? Wait for them to come to them. Exactly. They create content and wait. So if I want my business to grow faster than everybody else's, then I, I, I can't be one of the agents that creates content and waits. I have to be one of the agents initiating the conversations, not waiting on the conversations. I could wait on the conversations and be an average agent. If you want to be an average agent, I love you. That's fine. That's great. That's awesome. Like, if you're happy, I'm happy. I don't, you don't have to be a top producer for me. I don't care. But if you want your business to grow faster than everybody else's, it's, it comes down to one thing. Are you having more conversations than they are? That's it. And so when I realized that, I was like, let me just call everybody and go and have these conversations. And then when you realize every lead is the same and you have the same conversation with a Zillow lead as you do a for sale by owner lead, as you do with a Facebook lead, as you do with a circle prospect lead, as you do with an expired lead, it's all the exact same conversations. Hey, this is who I am. I'm a real estate agent. What are you trying to do? How can I help you? It's, all, it's the exact same conversation every time. Then you start to relinquish your any anxiety you have around calling people and you just pick up the phone and blow your business up um i've had the pleasure of hearing you and watching you speak all over the nation in person and thank you so much for today ricky i wanted to ask are you still utilizing red x or have you pivoted over to a new program and system no red x is the absolute best out there it'll continue to be the best i mean if something does become better then i you know i'll take a look at it but the thing about them they're a great company they're always increasing the quality of their data and their processes and everything else and like there's all these there's companies that pop up that try to say oh well you can get all these leads without you know doing this you know hardcore prospecting and all this and that and it's all fine and dandy but i'm just telling you if you're doing something waiting on people to contact you you're going to be an average agent and you could be you could potentially become a top producer but it's going to take way longer i don't want longer i want right now so that um, for the challenge next week, if you do the VIP, you get 30 days of Red X for free, all their products for free for 30 days. So, so when you do the challenge, it's 300 for VIP. So with the 50 off, I'm doing just for today for you guys. At the $150, you get four days with me next week going through the entire business model and 30 days of Red X for free. Yeah incredible value i know that i'll certainly be there at your challenge next week ricky and i hope to see some other fellow faces there and it's a challenge like i'm gonna challenge you the 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 the, the, the daily um sessions are only available for 24 hours it's not to put on your information shelf to uh watch later or take action on later i'm gonna give you homework i'm gonna give you things to do i'm gonna teach you things you never even thought of in the business to help transform you now so that we i mean th the time is now <laughs> the time is right now. You know, there's no no need to wait to go out and build your business. This is the best opportunity ever because when a market's down like this, when it rebounds, it has the it has the potential to four or five x your business when it rebounds. Now, when it crashes, it can, it only could hurt it up to fifty percent. Like the people, like there's guys right now that are out there that are that are down. There's agents that are probably down fifty percent. But the big agents are probably down, say, 20%, maybe 20%, something like that. 
Now, they're only down like 20 to 50% in this down market, but when it rebounds, they're going to 4X. So when a market goes down, it only it, it's very little downside, 10, 20% for a year or two while the market's down. But when it rebounds, you forex. So you got to take the moment when the market's down, expand your influence so that when it rebounds, you will forex. If you sit around waiting on leads to come in like everybody else and the market rebounds, then you'll, you won't really forex. You know, you'll do a little better. You'll do 10, 20, 30% better, but you're not going to multiply your business. Right now is the opportunity. Absolutely. I'm ready to be challenged next week and I will be there. Let's Thanks. do it, man. Thank you for this incredible presentation. We're just over our time limit and we want to be respectful of everybody's time. Remember, we host this mastermind every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8, 8 a.m. Pacific, and recordings are posted in the EXP Young Professionals Workplace and Facebook groups. Thank you again, Ricky. Y'all can follow him at Ricky Carruth, and make sure you follow us at EXP Young Professionals. You can follow Eden at Sold by Eden and myself at Realtor Nolan. Thank you all so much for attending, and happy Friday. Y'all next week, Ricky's Thank challenge. You, Ricky. Be good. Thank you, Ricky. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend, everyone. See you next week. Fabulous weekend.